Hey guys, welcome back. It actually happened. It's 2 a.m. They're here. I did see that Cat Steven is alive. Y'all told me on Twitter. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter. I'm so happy about that. I love being wrong about things like this. I'm worried I'm gonna get sad. Let's just do this snow day. Nutrients in this shake. Dude, you're making me sad. Oh, he's growing up. I thought you knew cheese bags of that. I don't really use that anymore. At least pet this cat. Oh! Baby bird's growing up. Oh no. Oh. Uh, guys, I've been a vegetarian for like a month. And pup copter is for six year olds. And I have my own skincare routine. Anyways, it's cool. I already eat. Oh no. Pepperoni timeline, band name called it. Look, Steven, together breakfast, just like old times. Too much sugar for me. Don't do that to me. Oh, God. I'm not okay with this. I'm feeling guilty for being older. Oh, and she transformed into old Steven. Nah, bro. Classic Steven. Classic Steven? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm getting sad. It's Cat Steven. I haven't seen her all morning. Oh, weird. Find that cat now. <gasps> Garnet Steven. Dude, this is a fan art's wet dream. Steven tag. Wow, that takes me back. Well, I'm sure that. <gasps> huh, joke's on you. Pearl doesn't shape shift. The power of Steven tag. Dude, this is a DeviantArt page episode, and I'm here for it. Bro, what? I mean, yeah, if Nicki Minaj is too expensive. Oh my god! I love the Smash Brothers titles. Alexandrite Steven, Alexandrite Steven, Alexandrite Steven, Opal Steven, you yes! it! Opal Steven! Steven became a giant woman. Ish. I don't know why three-eyed Steven is what broke me, but it did. He's got the sleeves. It's not the same shirt. That's fine. Alexandra and Steven, Alexandra and Steven, Alexandra and Steven. <gasps> oh, I love her. Oh, I got scared he was gonna turn into pink Steven and it was gonna get scary. Can I just have fun? <gasps> Ruby and Sapphire Steven. Oh, guys, collect all the Stevens. No thank you to moody aggressive Steven. Yes to Sapphire Steven. We're sorry. God damn it, Stevens. <gasps> oh, I love the show so damn much. Oh, he still ran ahead of them like in the intro. Okay, that was really sweet. I really liked it. Damn it. I really liked that. That was so sweet. Strangely satisfying fan service. It kind of had a message, like almost like the show's insecure about being Steven Universe future instead of Steven Universe. But it felt like it kind of like touched on that a little bit. I really liked that. Yeah, obviously I should have seen the theme here coming, but I just, I just really went along for that ride. That was so sweet. The last couple episodes, the gem's like sort of maternal side really starts to show and I'm really liking that dynamic shift. I also really want those to be Funko Pops. I have a problem with buying Funko Pops. Also, Rebecca Sugar, while you're taking requests from tiny YouTube channels, um, I would also like Pumpkin to come back, please. Thank you. I'm scared because Lapis was trending on Twitter, which means something good or something bad. Lapis pants! Steven onions? Steven flowers? I used to terraform planets without thinking twice. I wonder what I destroyed. Oh, don't go down that road. I guess we never do explore what a Lapis gem would do. Oh, I see. This is just a misunderstanding. Terraforming is what we like. But huh. You're free to do whatever you like. Mm-hmm. Why are we splitting hairs? How can the thing we've always done just suddenly be wrong? At the very least, we've got to finish this world. Oh my god, I love this episode already. This is going to be a fight. They're not nice like me. Um. Exactly. Ha! <laughs> yes, own up to it. <laughs> they danced back. Dance like his infusion. Did did that flower just poop another flower? Danger, danger. You just made them smarter and scarier. Something more physical, like dance. Dance? 
They're gonna fuse. Oh no, they're gonna fuse into something scarier and deadlier. You could try expressing yourself through song. Yeah, she has a really good ballad, so. Oh no. Oh no, oh yes, oh no, oh yes. That's racist. No, that's a big shield though. No, Lapis Chains. Oh, sh ah, demon kill it with fire. Uh, this, this hurts a lot. That's not you anymore. Oh, that got a little scary. Was I expecting a fusion? Yes. Am I mad? No. Steven's influence saved the day, but it wasn't Steven saving the day. Like sort of reaffirming from what he learned with Amethyst in the second episode, sometimes someone else can solve it. And this time he didn't get involved really at all. And I kind of really liked that. Like it's showing you the impact and the influence that he has on others. I really liked it. Sorry guys if that was a little short towards the end. Uh, there was a car crash right outside our house. Everyone's fine. It was just scary and loud and intense. And then it was 4.30 in the morning and we had to go to bed. So here I am in a different shirt, same jacket, talking Steven Universe Future. Snow Day for me was a really, like surprisingly heavy one. Whether you're looking at this from the characters or just general storytelling, a sign of growth in your main character or in a character is how other characters interact with them. And I feel like this touched on it a lot while also sort of hint hitting at, you know, parentage, cause it, it's something that kind of eludes you at times, but Steven Universe Future is kind of been touching at a little more. You know, the Crystal Gems raised Steven. You know, Pearl in a very special episode saying like, Steven, you're always such a good kid. You weren't like this. I'm sorry, I never told you that. Like kind of touching on, yeah, like they raised him. So they kind of like a parent would, will always see you as their child. The eye will still take them to how they see you. And I loved how they did it in a way where it was playful and fun, fan art inspiration for days. I honestly can't wait to see the fan art that comes from this episode. Just every variation of Steven being introduced in this Super Smash Brothers way was super amazing. I didn't realize it until the second time I watched it. Fusions have their own identity and personality, i.e. Ruby Sapphire into Garnet. So it also hit me watching it a second time after I was done going, oh, giant woman. I realized all the fusions miss Steven too and appreciate and admire Steven, but also miss little Steven or Steven classic. It, it just gave more life to like little moments that we know of throughout the show. Like it was almost like a little clip show. We had cheeseburger backpack, Cat Steven is okay. That makes me so happy. Rose Quartz's room, together breakfast, all kinds of different things. Even touching on like Steven tag, but then like, ha, Pearl never used to play these games, but now she longs for those days so much too that she'll join in. I thought everyone looks great, and I loved how everyone kind of had their own facial characteristics, as well as the physical ones, like the hair and the gem placement, but like, Amethyst's lips and Pearl's nose and Garnet's three eyes when she took off her glasses. I really liked the design of everybody and I loved seeing the Steven versions of all the fusions. I thought they all looked really cool and really great. Everyone apologizing to him, hugging him, acknowledging him, reaffirming their respect and admiration of the person that he's becoming. That place in the middle, that compromise on top of Steven going, well, I can't work, so let's play. And it's like, okay, but let's play to this new realm of respect we just established. We're now gonna play older Steven Tag. And I loved that. It also had this sort of meta layer to it. It felt like this episode was made just in case people did miss the original Steven universe. Guide people through that if they missed old Steven. You know, the old style of doing adventures. And I, I kind of really liked that. Like it felt like not so much an apology, but like a check-in. Getting also a taste of Steven's responsibilities. Like we've seen the fun stuff of what Steven's job and places with new homeschool. Now we're seeing the responsibilities grow. Like first it was, oh, let me show you around and give you fun introduction backstory and shooting a commercial. And then we have 
had the safety Geminar, and now it's, you know, the scheduling and volleyball practice, really? You're gonna throw that at us that soon after you ripped everyone's hearts out like three weeks ago? Too soon. He's at a phase in his life that reminds me of a realization I had a couple years ago where it was the first time that it snowed and I got angry because I still had to go to work through that snow. And as I was walking through it, I stopped and realized snow days no longer mean a day off. And it was one of the first times I really felt like a grown up. But that was the first time I ever truly did. Like I felt like I was in my 20s working a job. It was just interesting. The snow day not being an off day for Steven, like that, I felt that. And I, I think it was really important. I really, damn it, I really loved it. Oh, anything down to let's eat together breakfast. Nah, I have a protein shake, cheeseburger backpack, got a side bag, packed it myself. Like, ah, let us have this too. Like we, having seen Steven grow up through so many seasons, like I, there's a part of us that also wants us to see kid Steven put on his cheeseburger backpack and be adorable. We're learning, we're growing, we're, we're healing, we're appreciating each other. I'm worried that something bad's gonna happen, but I'm trying to enjoy the now. I feel like that's something Steven Universe Future is, is trying to show us, is to enjoy the now. Like here we are in the future, now enjoy that future. Relish in the, in the achievement and the growth and the development and aging and experience and wisdom that comes with it. I really liked that. I, can't, I, I keep wanting to say, what's the use in feeling blue? And, and then uh, why so blue? Lapis Lazuli returns. I want literally, can we get this, but now with Peridot and with Greg and with Lars and with Lion and Connie and Alvin and Simon and Theodore, can we get it with everybody now, please? This is what I want, but with all the characters, we'll get that. I trust them. I trust them. It's fine. I took a lot of layers from this episode. I, I enjoyed the song. It's interesting. I can't remember the name of Lapis's first song. I see the ocean or something like that. Do you have your phone? I don't. It's charging. You suck. There's the song Lapis Lazuli. She was trapped in a mirror and it couldn't be clear. I, that's not what I'm talking about. The distant shore. I'm an expert. It's interesting because the distant shore, it had a very uh, Disney presence to it, a call to action, sort of like a how far I'll go or a touch the sky from Brave, a very like opening story, like, like exploration of the world, admiration of the unknown, a search for identity. But then I felt like this one felt like someone who now does understand it is now instead of craving information or seeking information is now giving information. Disneyed around all of the not onion, not watermelon plant creature things. And as they're all around her and like the light shining, she's kind of looking out and it had a very Disney princessy kind of a feel to it. Like the laying in the grass and the wildlife around her, like a bird might as well have landed on her fingers. She could sing to it, which I really liked, but it was instead of desiring information. Oh my God. What? I just won the Adventure Time DVD box set on Twitter from Cartoon Network. Ah! Are you kidding me? I'll put up a screenshot. <laughs> oh my god, I won! That's so cool! <laughs> oh, thank you Cartoon Network. I'm sorry that I do videos about your stuff. Thanks for never yelling at me for doing that. Okay, focusing, focusing, focusing. Um, I really like the, the, the new Lapis song, but it, it felt so sort of at peace, this delicate balance that they found in themselves and the world. I really loved that. The episode also, this one sort of paralleled Steven and Amethyst. Steven got way too over involved in what Amethyst wanted to do. This time, Steven really did take a back seat and let the influence and the impact he's had on his friends and his team to really let her choose and shine and take the spotlight here. And he trusted her, like he, he defended her with his shield. He stood by her. He didn't, you know, no, Lapis, stop. Like he wasn't like reaching out and stop and like pulling her back or with withholding her feelings. It, on one hand, it felt like the other Lapises. At moments, it felt like social change. Like, what do you mean? Like suddenly we can't do this now? We can't terraform and destroy worlds? It felt very much like a, so what, suddenly that word's an offensive word kind of a approach. And I found that really interesting. This was a social change in this world and not everyone's gonna get the memo right away, especially when it's the approach of do whatever you want, like you're free now. Okay, I wanna keep it up. 
but you can't do, you're not, you're not gonna do that. Well, you said anything. Like, it was a very aggressive and defensive stance on it. And I, I found that really interesting. And maybe I'm just reading into it a lot because of the current social climate. So what, now I'm bad? It's like, well, we're giving you an opportunity to figure out something else to do or something else to say. You know what I mean? Like, it gave me a lot of those kind of flavors. It also touches on how Lapis has gone through an intense amount of trauma, both being trapped in the mirror and then being forced into a fusion with Jasper and then trying to come to terms with that, not trusting people. Like she thinks that she needs isolation and it turns out that that's not what she needs at all. She's pushing people away. A lot has gone on with this character. All those things helped her appreciate things more now. Surviving it and getting out on the other side of any type of intense or negative situation stronger on the other side. You're, you're more knowledge. You have a different point of view. Touching on that, but then also someone who hasn't gone through those things isn't wrong. We, it, she didn't want to trap them in a mirror, but then when she used the water chains, that hurt. She realized that and then it was used against her. And then once again, for that brief moment, Lapis is in chains and it, it triggered the the water demon avatar the last airbender moment sometimes you know people need inspiration through creative outlet like with dance for uh freckles lapis short bob lapis wasn't feeling any of that and i i was kind of hoping we would see what would maybe inspire her but also some people don't change that fast like it was a very interesting way to to deliver that type of message and information to the audience she's suffering from ptsd and they could have given her like flashbacks or trigger words. She could have just relapsed into pushing people away again. And it's like, oh no, not again. It was a very interesting way of kind of showing you a different version of yourself and helping you understand even more who you are and what you've been through and what you've seen and how that's shaped and formed you now. And I felt like they handled it very nicely. Like it was very well done. It, just like how it wasn't so harsh and unyielding, it also wasn't very ham-fisted and kitschy. What's gonna work for you doesn't work for somebody else. It doesn't make anybody better or superior. Everyone's going to be different. That was taken into a lot of consideration here. You know, they essentially came in and turned these gems' worlds upside down. Everything you think is right is absolutely wrong. Come change. That's a lot to ask, no matter what's going on. You know, seeing that at least affected one of them, like, gives a sense of hope, but also gives a sense of accomplishment for Lapis, who kind of had to look that in the eye, acknowledging, but then facing and realizing, and then taking control over her shortcomings, her weaknesses. I think after all that, like, that feeling of accomplishment for her that at least one of them wanted to read the brochure. But we also got a taste of her owning, acknowledging, and understanding who she is and what she's gone through, even touching on things like meat more, acknowledging how much that helped her, which is stuff she got from Peridot and from Steven and the Crystal Gems and support, something that she pushed against for so long. And I think it kind of rounds off that arc and now she's ready to pass that on to others and that would then be her next level of this understanding is then helping someone else find theirs. There's a lot that goes on with Lapis's character and I feel like taking a little more time to check in and put some more consideration towards it goes a long way. I really valued it. Oh, you're Steven. Wow, I thought you'd be taller. Well, he's half diamond. Should we only half lesson? It was interesting to see someone come at it like that after seeing all the gems wake up and go, oh, I, I'm not a bubble anymore and my color's a little off. I'll just follow you then. I guess I'll go find my thing. It was interesting to see a different type of resilience than aggressive resilience like we got with Jasper, or even someone who negates it all together like Bluebird, this time these Lapises didn't understand yet. Oh, you sing and dance just like a pearl, tee hee hee, like, oh, you're stuck in that old way of thinking, like that just fermented it for me. I think dropping the first four and the fourth one being volleyball, I think put me at a place of ill at ease where I'm like, when's the next devastating thing gonna happen? But yeah, there you guys go. What did you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did, subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much to everybody who's been so kind and patient with me right now. I'm taking a little time off during the holidays from full trying to stand videos just so I can take some time to be around my, my friends, my loved ones, my family uh, during not only the holiday season, but a difficult one at that. So thanks everyone for letting me take a break. I, as soon as I think of fun one-off videos, I'll be working on those and I can't wait to start doing Trying to Stand in 2020. I'll be finishing off Steven Universe Future next week. Thank you so much for watching guys. I appreciate each and every one of you and take care of yourselves, please.